Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Anthazar, but y'all can just call me Anthe. <laughs> This video is all about me trying to figure out what project to do for Camp NaNoWriMo. Sun help! So there are a lot of options that I can choose from. <laughs> oh no. We're gonna talk about them because there's a lot. There is a lot of potential projects that I could play with in April and it has to not be the Marked Heroes. I mean, I'm going to be doing the Marked Heroes anyway, so, and I'm going to be doing the Harry Potter fan fiction, so it has to be a third project. Anthe, are you crazy? Very crazy. So let's start off the list, shall we? Memory Relic. Now I've talked about this. You saw me outline the first two chapters of it. The basic premise is there is history in this world where there is a reincarnating hero and Dark Lord, and there's always a constant cycle of hero defeating the Dark Lord. It's been a while since the last cycle, and so most of the people view it as legend and stuff. And much of the time, the hero defeats the Dark Lord without anyone really knowing about it. Thank you, hero, for your selfless service. <laughs> but the history always says that the hero is a boy. And so the story starts off with our heroine and her little brother. There's going to be lots of tragedy in it, but also at the same time poking fun at everything. So there'll be a serious note to it and then at the same time absolutely crazy because at the beginning of the story, her little brother is killed and she gains the power of the next hero. I don't know what this person is, but like some messenger arrives and is like, thank you for becoming the newest hero. Um, we're sorry for the loss of your sister. And the heroine's like, excuse me, it's my brother. And they're like, oh, okay. And so... <laughs> It's all going to be like that, and I there's going to be seven relics that she has to get, and as she gets each new relic, she gets memories from the Dark Lord. And it's going to be one book. It's just one book. The problem is, I have to be in a certain mindset for it. Like, I've got to be really, really funny. <laughs> I need to binge watch the Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> I always get extra witty after that. <laughs> I love that show. So yeah, I have to be in a certain mindset for that. I have to actually outline the sucker because it's not. I mean, I have the two chapters outlined. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Okay, yay, those are outlined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Nothing, so the only thing that's written on it is just little bits and pieces of ideas and the premise. And I know the ending. And I actually know the ending of what will happen. So, and I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> I haven't created all of the characters. I don't know much about them. I know, I don't even know their names. There would be a lot of stuff that I have to think about. And I don't know if I have the brain capacity to think of all of it before Mar before April 1st. <laughs> so yeah. It's still a fun story and I still want to do it, but I'm going to do it in April. That is the question. On to the next story. Now its title is tentative, but right now it's called The Last Hero. This story was inspired by uh, Breath of the Wild. I finished the game and the thing that I don't like about Legend of Zelda games, because they're all like this, you go and defeat the final, final boss. And then the game gives you a gold star and says, yay, great job. And then acts like you never defeated the bad guy. So there's no post game, basically. In Breath of the Wild, after you defeat Calamity Ganon, the castle still looks like you've, still looks like Calamity Ganon is still there. <laughs> I hate that. And so it got me thinking about what would happen to the hero after 
going through the trials of being a hero. And I came up with an original story idea where the hero is defeats the bad guy. The book opens with the bad guy dead. And our hero is drenched in blood. His name is Vaughn. The entire castle is killed. Everyone is dead in the castle, in the courtyard, and in the surrounding town. And the castle is in flames. And he is exhausted and has been through a great trial. And he doesn't know what to do. And for a brief minute, he, he thinks to just stay in the castle and burn with the rest of them. But his self-preservation wins out and he leaves the castle. And the story starts with him struggling to find out what to do next. There's already 10,000 words written on this story. I have no idea what the ending is, but I do know the characters. I know the hero. I know um, two of his companions that he meets up and becomes friends with. I just wanted to explore what it would be like for the hero kind of experiencing PTSD as well and still being a hero fighting monsters for villagers and stuff like that and he's powerful but at the same time lost and alone because the castle has been destroyed and, and the world must recover after their kingdom has been destroyed and the world is still besieged with monsters and whatever. That one is a more grim and dark story that focuses on friendships and deep struggling things for our hero. I really like this one a lot. I'm probably more inclined to do this one than I would be for Memory Relic. Like, Memory Relic is a lot of fun, but like, it just depends. What mood am I going to be in? <laughs> Come April 1st, am I going to be in that satire type mood or am I gonna be let's go grim and dark <laughs> so yeah who knows <laughs> that doesn't mean that this story is not without its funny points one of the characters that he meets is uh his name is called Aziel and he is of a different race um I haven't quite figured out what race but he has been very secluded his race is very secluded from humans and they're very different. And so he doesn't understand what human affection is. <laughs> so when he sees two people uh, engaging in kissing, he thinks that they are chewing on each other and trying to consume each other. <laughs> and he's like, cease and desist. <laughs> so that's his character. So it's not without its funny points. It's just very different. And it does have 10,000 words on it. That does make it easier to write, but it has no real plot direction as much as, say, Memory Relic would have. And The Last Hero would only be one book. On to the next one, Ascendant Lost, which is probably going to be at least two books, probably more because I really like all of the characters. So Ascendant Lost has 13,000 words written on it. All of the characters are really known. There's a lot of them. There's at least eight characters, and I know all of them, and their personalities, and their wants, and their desires, and all of it. This story um, came with an idea and has evolved over time, but the story starts off with these siblings fighting and living together. Something catastrophic happens, I don't know what yet, and then they are teleported into a new world. But... They're all separated, and many of them think that the other of their siblings are dead. Our main character, Zephyr, is with his sister, Selina. The story goes that they are taken in by a village, and they're taken in by the hall that has all of these apprentices to this main magician. Except they are basically captives. <laughs> and then one day, Selina goes missing, and Zephyr has no idea where she's gone. And then they all claim that he never had a sister in the first place. So he is determined to find his sister in the process, tries to do magic, and gets turned into a cat. <laughs> that was the original premise of the story, and it's evolved and gotten more complex. And so he runs away as a cat and doesn't know how to get out of it. And he meets my favorite character, whose name is Quietus. 
and he sees the cat and is excited because yeah he's a sociopath <laughs> so he sees a cat and he thinks oh this is gonna be fun how can i torture this critter but because zephyr is highly intelligent for cats quietus is rather intrigued by the cat and ends up keeping him and that's how the kind of story goes and so part of the story is zephyr trying to not be a cat anymore and go back to being a human and then his next part is to find his sister so and then all at the same time his other two siblings everanth and lane are lost in this world and i don't know 100 percent what happened to selena but something happened to her She's alive though. <laughs> so yeah, that is a more complex story with lots of complex worlds and complex world building. <laughs> but I know the characters, you know, that could be fun, but could I write 50,000 words on it in the month of April? That is the question. We're not done yet. We are not done yet, okay? <laughs> okay, on to the next one. <clears throat> This one's called War of the Broken, and it's going to be a trilogy, even though I don't have plot ideas for the whole trilogy, but I do know that I want it to be three books. And you know, it might just be two. Who knows? There are two warring factions, and the rival faction keep losing. They do not understand why they keep losing. Every time they do something sneaky, the Empire faction knows what they are doing every single time, which leads them to believe that there is a traitor in their midst. They find out that there is a weapon being hidden in one com in a certain compound held by the uh, Empire faction, and they go and attack it. And when they attack it, they come upon a room and they find a severely ill, mistreated young boy. He's probably between the ages of 12 to 14. I haven't really decided yet. As they open the door and he looks at them and he smiles at them, he says, you've come to kill me, finally. And that is the only thing he'll say to them. And so they don't really understand what's going on. And so they take him and bring him back to their um, rebel camp. Well, the boy is an oracle and he can see into the future. And that is why the Empire was able to win all of this time. He was their weapon. I'm going to be dealing with these warring factions, and then I'm going to be dealing with this traumatized 14-year-old who would rather not live anymore. But he is given to one of the captains in the rebel faction who has to do whatever he can to get this kid to open up and find out why he was in that compound, because they don't know that he is an oracle and that he was the weapon and so it's fun to explore that kind of relationship i love found family love it all the way yeah that one's a fun one i have done magic a little bit in a different creative way i'm excited for it that one's interesting uh now war of the broken has eight thousand words in both actual writing and in outline but it's not 100%, you know, outlined. Next on my list is book two of The Beyond Cycle, which is the sequel to my already published book, Beyond the Alluring Sky. It has the tentative title of Beyond the Cunning Shadows. We will see about that. Not 100% sure. The title has changed multiple times. Yeah, I've struggled with these titles. But it has 97,000 words done on it. And I have struggled with this book for a while now. <laughs> I know the ending. That's not the problem. The problem is what I need to reveal at the ending that will set up more lore for the rest of the books. So it's been a major struggle. <laughs> I could work on this. I should. <sighs> Beyond Cycle has a projected at least five books, possibly more. I know the plot to the third book, and I know a lot of the resolution doesn't happen in book four, so there has to be a book five. So. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> 
So I could actually work on book three in, in April and skip book two altogether. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I can't talk about this one because if you haven't read Beyond the Learning Sky, it anything that I say in this will just spoil all of the fun reveals in book one. I can at least say that the book starts immediately after the first book and continues on from there. There's a lot of political issues and a lot and a lot of power struggles and it's just all around fun. And you know how much I love to torture my characters. So m the main character K is just absolutely fed up with life. <laughs> I know what needs to happen. I just don't know what to reveal and what I want to reveal because whatever I choose to reveal then I need to continue. And I love to foreshadow and I don't want to not foreshadow. So it's kind of like, oh, what do I do? So yeah, that's the problem. I could work on book three. There's a thought. The next book is tentatively called Scapegoat. And the main character, his name is Lorne, and he lives in a terrible situation with a stepfather. And one time while he's tending to his wounds in the river, a woman is doing her laundry in the river and she shows him some kindness. And he is touched by this because he doesn't know much kindness. And in this world, the people who live in this village live near the edge, kind of near the base of a mountain. And there is a perimeter around the mountain that is blocked off from being able to crossover. It is coming time to the yearly uh, sacrifice to the mountain god. And the mountain is raging and you can hear and feel the earth trembling. And so it is time to send forth their sacrifice. And what they do is they draw lots. Men first, women second, children last. The whole village comes and Lauren has, you know, the fleeting wish that his stepfather would be chosen. But he feels like he sins in this wish of wishing ill on someone at the same time. But the lot falls upon the woman that gave him kindness at the river. She has four sons and is pregnant with their fifth child. And Lorne just says, I will take her place. And that is how the book starts. And he is then taken to the base of the mountain and must go and be a sacrifice to the mountain god. That's where the story starts. It has 35,000 words on it. I could revise it and fix all everything. It needs, it doesn't have an ending kind of. I need to work on that. And I kind of ended it, ended my writing of it on a reveal. And then I stopped writing it. So yeah, that has a lot on it. <sighs> there is so much I could do with that, but yeah. Am I, I'm kind of leaning towards this one, maybe, because it's got stuff done on it and I could just sit down and reread it and revise it and maybe finish it. <laughs> maybe finish a book. <laughs> what a concept. But yeah, it's probably just one book, possibly two. I don't know. We'll see if I make it into two small novellas or make it into one whole book. You thought I was done, didn't you? You thought we were done. Nope. So this one I think I did during April 2016. It's called The Soul's Whisper and it's just one book and it's got 41,000 words on it and it's just all fluff. <laughs> the premise is that there is a giant in the forest with his feline companion and he come across as um, a little 10 to 12 year old boy in the forest and he takes him home, dresses his wounds and tries to heal his fever. And this little boy is just the most talkative little creature on the planet. And this giant who has been very secluded doesn't really know what to do with him. <laughs> so it's just this all this really sweet dynamic between these two characters. And also there's lots of 
magical forest things and talking animals. And it's just, it's a really sweet story. And I don't know the ending to it, but most of it is kind of written. So I could revise this and finish it. What a thought. What a thought, Anthony. We could actually finish more books. This is just a standalone book as well. So I'm kind of leaning towards four. <laughs> oh, then help. I betcha. Come April, I'm going to just randomly decide and it's going to change. Yeah, I'm actually kind of leaning, like, if I want to write something new, I would probably go with The Last Hero. If I want to go with something that's nearly finished, I have three options, which is Beyond Two, Scapegoat, and The Soul's Whisper. Now, but each of those are, you know, each of those are different types of brain capacity. Beyond Two is figuring out the lore for the rest of the series and, you know, political intrigue and all of that wonderful good, good jazz. <laughs> the scapegoat is finishing some major plot lines and figuring out that stuff. The Soul's Whisper is deciding how complex I want the ending to be and if I'm just in a really fluffy mood. So yeah, I've got I've got a lot to, I've got a lot to choose from. Let me know down in the comments below which story intrigues you the most and which one do you think I should work on. Obviously, I probably won't pick what you suggest, but I would like to know what you think about it. <laughs> I'm interested in what you're thinking about it because, to be honest with you, I have no idea. And I really want to pick something other than the Mark Taros and other than the fan fiction. I'd really like to do something other than that. What am I going to do? I don't know. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Does your April look like this? Are you as scatterbrained and unsure of what project to do in April like me? Let me know down in the comments below. If you know what project you're going to be doing in April, tell me about it. I'm interested. And if you're not a writer, then please root the rest of us on because we need help. <laughs> we need lots of help. <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did i would greatly appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up <laughs> and if you're not already already subscribed then please do so now i would greatly appreciate it i make videos on mondays and fridays <laughs> all right then until next time bye wish me luck <laughs>